a brand new paperclip contrabass clarinet to low C for less than 3000 Australian dollars. Here's the catch. It's not a LeBlanc. Hi everyone, Brendan Tui here. I promise I'll show you more of the contrabass in just a second, but basically I just wanted to talk about it for a sec. So we know it's not a LeBlanc. Okay, what is it then? It's basically a Chinese copy of LeBlanc's original paperclip design. So the company that makes it is called Frater. It's F-R-A-T-E-R. -E Frater, Frater Music. And it basically comes out of the same factory as Jinbao instruments. Um, maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. Jinbao are one of the slightly more reputable Chinese brands, if that makes sense. So sometimes uh, you'll hear to it or see it uh, online referred to as the Jinbao contrabass clarinet. So if you Google search uh, Frata Music, it's F-R-A-T-E-R -E Music, uh, Frata Music contrabass clarinet, it should come up for sale and don't freak out but they sell it through Alibaba. I know, right? So I usually would never, ever, ever buy anything from Alibaba, um, but I actually did a whole bunch of research into the company and the instrument, and I got in touch with them. I sent them uh, inquiries, had big, long uh, conversations over email. They sent me lots and lots of photos. Um, and apparently they've sold quite a lot of them in Europe over the last sort of five or six years. And I actually managed to find someone who had bought one uh, through Facebook, got in touch with them. They answered a lot of questions. They sent lots of photos um, and even a recording so I could hear what it sounded like them playing it. So that was all tremendously helpful. And that helped me pull the trigger, I guess, um, on this fairly large uh, transaction and yeah I'm basically just gonna review it uh, unbox it and we'll see how it goes I'm, I'm kind of expecting it to be rubbish but if it's not then fantastic it'll be a great uh, value I guess um, instrument so I'm gonna throw to a bunch of clips now of me unboxing it and play testing it um, as always, apologies for the terrible lighting, uh, the changing camera angles, um, and the poor audio as well, but it'll give you an idea of my first impressions of this instrument. So, all right, with that being said, here it is. Hello everyone. Today is a very exciting day. I can't wipe the smile off my face. Something big has just arrived in the mail and here it is. Ta-da! You can see the writing on the box there. Very exciting. So I'm gonna unbox it for you and we'll see how it goes. guys it is freshly unboxed here it is pretty nice case actually um, one piece case by the looks of it it's pretty long oh really strong velcro moment of truth There she is, all wrapped up in plastic. All right, I'll get all this plastic off and I'll get back. Okay, I've gotten all the plastic off. 
and the first thing I notice is the case itself, which looks quite nice, but on further inspection, a lot of the stuff is very loose. This is basically about to fall out. I don't know how well or not you can see that. I thought it was removable, but it is actually glued in, but it's really, really not a lot of uh, protection there. In fact, I've already spotted at the top of this joint here a massive dent. So the top is dented, probably just from shipping in a case that's not very protective. So looks like I might end up making a custom Pelican case for this as well. Which is a shame because the case looks quite nice. It's got backpack straps and everything. Um, unless I just kind of re-glue a bunch of the inserts, but yeah, it's already dented, so I'll have to get that fixed. All right, time to set her up and see if she plays. Got it set up over in the corner here. Ended up using a spare Hercules bass clarinet bassoon stand. Found it tricky to get the bell on properly. Uh, the little adjustment thing was a bit tight and wouldn't slide on, so I had to kind of twist it and turn it, as I suppose you have to do with any clarinet joint. Hopefully the Hopefully the uh, bottom brace, bell, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really get damaged or dented in there. And I just wanted to show you the mouthpiece real quick. Oops, it's hard to do this one-handed. Looks pretty average, but we'll see how it plays. Might end up getting a decent mouthpiece on it, but we'll see how this goes for now. It did also come with what looks like an official, actual Van Doren Concha Reed. I thought it might have been a, a fake, you know, Chinese imitation copy, but it looks legit at least so we'll give that a go and see how it plays okay guys i've got it set up here not played a single note on it i tried to use an extract but couldn't get the height length to work so i've resorted to the peg we'll see how it goes it's hard to get this whole thing in frame Just gonna start with an open G and work my way down, I guess. I'm mistaken. Can't get low E flat to work. Okay, 
that's low E flat working. One eternity later. Okay, so anything lower than E flat is not working, and I think I figured out why. The low E flat key is down here, right? Look at that. There's a linkage around the side here, but it's not quite. Oh, there it is. It's not quite doing the right thing at the moment. So I'm hoping it's just a, a simple fix. There's probably a needle spring or some adjustment corks or something not quite right. So I'll probably have to take it to a tech to get it fixed up, but I was expecting that. Um, the notes that I could play sounded fine to me. Um, the reed, even though it's a strength three Van Doren, feels very, very soft and squeaky, and it's probably more to do with the mouthpiece than the reed. So I'm gonna have to get the whole horn checked over, probably get a decent mouthpiece, and then report back with some hopefully semi-decent playing. But overall first impressions of this instrument, are uh, it's okay. We'll see how it goes once it's all fixed up and ready and raring to go. Okay guys, so I've been playing with it for about 15-20 minutes now and I've made a few discoveries. The first one was I actually found my first shim. You probably won't be able to see that on camera but there's a, there was a tiny little shim wedged up right at the very top um, underneath the low C tone hole. So the very last tone hole on the whole paper clip was wedged up right up the very top. So I checked the whole thing, couldn't find any other shims. So now it's less squeaky, it's a little bit more stable. There's probably still some leaks, um, which I'll get checked out, but I can finally get to a low C. The problem is I can't go, I can't play it the way I want to play it. I can't go right hand pinky for F, left hand pinky for E, right hand pinky for E flat, and then left hand pinky for D. Going that way doesn't seem to work. Uh, the right hand E flat is still causing problems. So when I go from, the right hand E flat came out pretty well that time, but when I try and take the left hand pinky off, to go to left hand pinky D, uh, it's not, not sealing. The right hand pinky E flat is not keeping the E closed. So what I have to do is go left F, right E, forget about E flat altogether, and then just go left D. And then from there, I can get a C sharp and a C, although it's easier to go D to C than going D, C sharp, C. So I'll just play for a little bit Hopefully this comes out okay. C. So that was me skipping E flat down the bottom. Um, for whatever reason, the E flat key is not keeping the E key closed. So I can go E to D, but I can't go E, E flat D. Um, but at least the low C is coming out. So I think taking that shim out definitely helped the whole instrument. I'll just have to get that uh, right hand E flat key looked at and fixed up. But for now, 
she's semi-playable. A um, couple of quick impressions overall. Uh, the tuning is close, but as you go lower, it gets flatter to be expected on any large clarinet. Um, the key work feels quite soft. Um, the pads are what look to be white leather pads. Um, actually, the pads look okay and they feel okay, but the key work feels a little bit spongy for me. Um, I'm sure it's contributing to some leaks around the place. Um, just lifting it on and off the stand, I lifted it with the brace between the two joints and it does hold the weight, so that's good. I was worried it was going to bend and, you know, put, put kinks in the tube and all sorts of things, but it seems to be okay. Um, oh, I also experimented with some mouthpieces and reeds. So I got my Contra Alto out, which is a Selma Bundy. I expected the mouthpieces not to fit and they didn't, so that's fine but I tried the ligatures and I tried some reeds. I tried some legers that I used on my Contra Alto. And on this, they didn't work at all. Um, they were basically unplayable, really squeaky. Um, I could barely get an open G. Anything else that wasn't an open G squeaked. So probably just a, a marriage of the reed strength to the mouthpiece kind of thing. But so far the mouthpiece that it came with and the Strength 3 Van Doren read that it came with are uh, playing just fine. <laughs> just stick with the regular mouthpiece and read for now. All right, I might leave it there. I'll try and get this E flat key fixed up and I'll come back to you a bit later with some other impressions and other videos. All right, see ya, bye. All right guys, there you have it. My initial impressions after playtesting the Jinbao contrabass clarinet for the first time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I also just wanted to let you guys know of some future plans for a bit of a Contra Bass video series, I guess, that I'm planning. I want to record a whole bunch of different videos on this instrument, mainly comparing it against other Contra Bass clarinets. So I've got a few mates here in Melbourne who have different kinds of Contra Basses, uh, Paperclip LeBlancs, Straight LeBlancs, uh, even Eppelsheim. I don't know of a Melbourne-based uh, Selma. Um, I do know there's one in Sydney, but I think that'd be difficult to get our hands on. But yeah, I want to put it up against a whole bunch of other uh, contrabasses. Oh, also the LeBlanc uh, plastic ABS straight one. Um, got all sorts of plans to compare it against those. And basically see if it's still worth the, the money, I guess. Um, it's a good value buy, which I think it is. Um, I just have to get mine fixed up first, but once that's done, I'm sure it'll be pretty, pretty decent. All right, I might leave it there and let me know if you have any questions. All right, see ya. Bye.